Hi, see so your cake cracked. No worries, it happens to the best of us. Let's see if we can fix it so it's perfect for your next bake. Your cake is probably split for one or more of the following reasons. Number one, it's the most common, is that your oven was probably too hot. If your cake forms a crust on the top too fast, the middle of the cake will continue to cook and then rise creating a dome and then it will want to like burst through causing the crack on the top of your cake. So chances are your oven temperature was a little bit too high. This is a common problem because no oven is calibrated the same and every oven has a unique feature. Uh, your home oven is different than a commercial kitchen oven. And so if you're following the same recipe, they might be a little bit different. Also, um, there are different styles of ovens, ones that have a conventional fan that runs through and some that doesn't. I remember when I was in Spain, I had a really old oven and it only had like a fire at the bottom of the oven and you can only change the flame if it's a, if you have a gas oven at home. Um, so these are things uh, to keep in mind. The best thing that I would recommend to see what temperature your oven is running at is to stick a thermometer in your oven and to see the metric point. If you find that your oven temperature is correct, the chances are it was the fault of the recipe. And in the future, I would just drop your temperature a little bit and periodically watch your cake to make sure that uh, the same incident doesn't happen until you find the perfect temperature or just look for a more reliable recipe. Another tip is that most cake should be baked on the middle rack because the top of your oven, the top rack in your oven might run uh, too hot. And lastly, uh, if your oven has a fan setting, normally I like to bake my baked goods on 20% fan and then at the designated temperature that way you can regulate the airflow properly. Number two is that you use too much leavening product. If the recipe calls for a certain amount of baking powder or baking soda uh, and they ask you to use spoons, just be careful that when you scoop it up that you use a butter knife and you scrape off the top to level it. Um, to solve this issue, I really recommend following recipes um, that are in grams or ask you to weigh them because they give you more precise measurements because uh, most of the time the leavening agent that you require is only a matter of a few grams, five to 10 grams, a teaspoon. It's such minuscule amounts, but if you accidentally put too much, it can really change the impact of your overall baked product. Number three, your cake tin uh, is too small. Oftentimes uh, a recipe will ask you to split a uh, cake batter into two designated pans, but maybe you only have one really big one. And so you pour all of the batter and it's still halfway, you think it'll rise, but there's something to consider like the density and now the new weight of your cake. Uh, it's really hard for your cake to be able to cook evenly. And so as it's rising, it'll create this dome still and then it'll crack. Um, so the best thing for you to do in this case is uh, it's recommended to put like a bowl of water into your oven. That way the vapor um, and the steam from the water kind of encourage uh, even bake for your cake um, if you do doesn't if you do want to use the bigger pan, but chances are your, your tin was too small. Number four, uh, recipe imbalance. Oftentimes uh, us bakers, we really just like to scoop things and then dump into the recipe. And so that means you probably added a little bit too much flour. Again, be careful to level off the top of your spoons and then also uh, look for recipes where you can weigh the ingredients to make sure you get the exact measurements uh, that you're looking for. Um, so either you added a little bit too much flour or you did not add enough of the wet mixture such as milk or cream or eggs or something to kind of balance out that recipe. Um, if you believe that you followed absolutely every single thing on the recipe, then chances are the recipe could also just be a fail. So no worries. <laughs> Number five, overmixing. Overmixing is so common when you're baking a cake. It's careful to pay attention to uh, what the recipe has called for uh, because when you add any sort of liquid to flour um, and start mixing it's automatically going to start working the gluten uh, in flour and basically that's just building up all those strands which is beautiful for bread but horrible for cakes it kind of changes the texture and makes it really dense and hard to eat um, but that's also probably why you have a crack on the top of your cake last but not least uh, opening your oven I know we get so excited to see the progress of our cakes. We want to touch 
the spring and make sure that everything is rising properly but opening and closing the oven causes too much of a variance in temperatures because you're letting all that hot air escape um, so that could easily uh, be a reason why you have a crack on your cake you just stressed it out too much so if, you, if that's you then just you know maybe turn on your oven light and peer through the window and just hope for the best uh, but keep that oven closed I hope that these tips help you and kind of help you better understand uh, the crack in your cake problem. It's so common, so don't feel bad. Uh, I'm sure your cake equally tastes delicious, even though it's not the most aesthetic. You can easily turn your cake into an ice cream sundae or some other form of a dessert, such as um, a cake pop or things like that. And then just try again. That's the fun thing about baking. Um, you just experiment a little and then uh, you make a couple mistakes and then the next time it'll be even better. So if you have any more questions or you really enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I'll have baking tip videos coming up every single week. Um, but as always, live life with love and love food with life. Bye guys!